and gentlemen, welcome to a new video. My name is Roy and today I'll be reacting to Sweden. Yes, Melody Festival has entered its final stage and this weekend they will decide on who will represent them at Eurovision. Yes, exciting. If you notice my voice, I want to say stem, which is Dutch, uh, my voice is a bit off. It's because I do have COVID at the moment. Woo! Yay! No, it's not to be happy about, but I feel quite okay right now. So I was like, yeah, let's record it now because maybe I feel worse later and then I won't be able to record it anymore because I want to have this video out this week somewhere. I don't know when I upload it. I don't know when I have time to edit. I mean, I have the time. Just, I don't know when I have the energy, basically. We'll find out about that. So whenever you're watching this, cool. Um, I'm going to react to all of the eight songs that were already in the final. If you want to see the reaction to the four that qualified from Andra Shanzen, semi-final, hmm. then make sure to check out the video I made last week. Uh, they were Anna Bergendal, Teos, they were Tone Sekelius and uh, Kazi Oppaya. Yes, I reacted to those already. Um, another little thing, I have already heard a little bit of a few of the songs, um, but it was basically just skimming through it, just skipping through it a little bit, just knowing what vibe it is. Uh, I never really took the proper chance to fully focus on listening to them. So that's what we're going to do today. Listen to these songs in full and find out whether I like any of them and who will be my favorite. So yeah, I hope to see you the first song. I'm going to go in the order of the real running order, but just skipping the ones that were in the semi-final because I already listened to those. Anyways, see you the first song. The first song that I'm going to listen to is by returnee Clara Hammerström. The song is called Run to the Hills. Let's find out what it is about and let's click play. Oh. Okay, we're getting a beat. I wasn't a massive fan of her previous two attempts. Let me adjust the camera slightly. Okay. Um, I don't know, it didn't fully click with me. Maybe this one will. Oh! Oh, we're going like side trancy. I dig that! Yo! I think this is full on side trance. What the hell? I mean, not full on as like. Going super overboard, they of course need to make it a bit more poppy. But that is quite unexpected from Sweden, wow. Oh, I totally get that this went through, to be honest. Like, it's definitely better than a lot of them from the semi final. Ah, oh, I just have these days sometimes where I just grab a Psytrance playlist and just listen to Psytrance the entire evening, and it's so nice. I would not mind this winning. I would love to see this at Eurovision. A bit random to have another girl there out of nowhere. <laughs> That's what I was about to say, like, staging-wise they could have done quite a few more things. She doesn't necessarily need to move, but there could have been a bit more movement with dancers or something else. I mean, I guess she's singing, I'm making it on my own. But it's a bit like, um, Dance Alone in 2017. Was it 2017? Yeah. It doesn't mean you can't have dancers around you. It's not that all of a sudden the meaning of the song will be left. The performance just needed to be more dynamic, but I love the song, it's really good. What a great start to the show, that's that's good. Very anti-Sweden, like... I'm not used to Sweden taking a bit of a risk, perhaps. They usually go for super, 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 super safe. Which is not my style. Um, so I applaud this already, so thank you very much. Thank you very much, Clara Hammerström. Let's go to the next song. Up next, we have another returning artist, but not just in Melody Festival. No, he also went to Eurovision before. Yes, that's cool. <laughs> it is John Lindvik, and this time he sings the song in Swedish, it seems, because the title is Engla Fakt. No idea what it means, no idea what it sounds like, so let's find out together and let's click play. John Lundvik. I just wanted to say that I really like, um, oh, what's his face? I can't come up with the um, name of his, his name. Basically, the announcer this year, the presenter, I really dig his voice and how he announces all the songs. It's a massive plus for me this year. 
Anyway, so. <laughs> Seems like it is a ballad this time around. I guess it's also a bit more of a traditional ballad. Cool. I needed a bit more of a chorus there. It was nice, but it didn't fully grab me. I don't know, it's nice to see him like this. Um, and it's great that he goes to the final, I think that's very deserved. But I don't think that this should go to Eurovision, which ultimately is what Melody Festival is for. Yeah, it's nice, um, but I don't think it should win. But it's great that he goes to the final, because it seems like this song means quite a lot to him. Um, and you know, it's always good to feel your own song, and that's good. Put a piece of yourself on a stage, which is ultimately what you want. Yeah, cool. Um, let's go to the next song. The third song that I will listen to is by the artist Anders Bache. I really enjoy how his first name is with an A and his second name is with a B. It's something that not a lot of people enjoy, but I do. <laughs> I'm weird, I know. Um, anyways, the song that he will perform is a Bigger Than The Universe. Yes! So yeah, let's find out what this song is about and let's click play. If this guy um, was from a French bakery, he would be Anders Baguette. Unsubscribe right now. Or subscribe if you love dad jokes. Anyway, song. His voice is nice. Oh! Okay! Oh, that's a really nice melody in this chorus, just by the way he pronounces the lyrics. That's good. Oh, that's dope. Huh. The staging seems a bit more finished than what um, Clara had, for example. Thinking about it, it would really come alive in Turin as well, because you have the waterfall and the sun staging. Is it the most unique song? No, but he delivers it really well. I think this is definitely a contender to win. Definitely. It's a type of song that, that Sweden usually goes for. Hmm. And it feels finished, and that, that's also very important. It feels very finished. Honestly, I would not mind this winning for Sweden. I think this would be a good pick. Yeah. Do I prefer it to Clara? I don't know. It's a tough choice. I like both quite a lot, actually. Huh. Yeah, honestly, that's that's a good contender. I, I can see that doing really well. I don't know the rest of the competition, but like, I can see that contending for the win, 100%. Um, yeah, cool, Anders. Anders Bache, bigger than the universe. It was cool. Let's go to the next song. The next song is by another very familiar face. It is Robin Bengtsson. The song this time is Innocent Love, and we've seen him like five times now, or this is the fifth time, I think. Um, it's a bit mad how often artists return to Melfest. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of that. I'd rather discover some cool new artist than of a returnee. But I mean, whatever. He always gives quite a good song. So yeah, let's find out what he brings this time around and let's click play. Interesting. The way that that song was introduced, it didn't sound like the pace that the beat is right now. It's a bit like the, the mistake in, in last year's Kaino song, where they reintroduced a drum and bass beat with a totally different type of beat. Ah, yeah. <clears throat> Got it. I can already pencil mark in every single thing now. Yeah, this is your kind of standard Melody Festival and song that I usually don't really care for. But I know Melfest has a lot of fans, so... I guess a lot of people will like it. I mean, I will say it's not bad, it's just not exciting anymore. Because it's happening so often. Yeah. It, it's not for me. It's very Melody Fe Wow, Jesus. It is very Melody Festival and... And that's good, I guess, for him, but... Not for me. And this is my... Not my least favorite, but second least favorite of all of them. Including the semi-final ones. Yeah, that's okay. Um, let's go to the next song. The next song on our list is by the artist Faith Ka Campbell. 
the song is called Freedom. So yeah, curious what it is. Let's click play. Interesting. The song is very like impactful lyrically. But then for the instrumentation, they choose a very basic route, I guess. Hmm. It's a bit like um, what Russia gave us last year with the backing singers singing it towards her. That's cool. I don't know, I feel like this song isn't fully right for her. Like, this feels more like your X Factor winning song, or, or maybe not even winning song, but a song you would give an X Factor candidate in the final. And that's just not enough for your vision, not for me at least. I like the choir, definitely. I don't know, I feel like the instrumentation of this song makes her voice swim a bit too much in, in the nothingness. And they could have really tried to make an instrumentation that enhances her voice, that makes it stand out even more. Right now, your only really point to latch onto the song is her voice. And they could have done a little bit better with this. I feel like this is one of those examples in Sweden where you can just really notice that the song is written by songwriters and not by the artists themselves. Because there's a disconnect, a little disconnect between the way she sings it and the way that the instrumentals are written. It's like you could paste in another artist into this and it wouldn't misstand. Like it would be still quite the same end result probably. Um, and that's a bit unfortunate. Um, anyways, let's go to the next song. The next song that I will listen to is by the artist Lia Mo and the song is called Bluffin. Puka. Yes, um, let's find out what it is about. Let's click play. Ever since that he joined Melfest, I always found him um, to be really interesting. And I feel like it will just be a matter of time until he goes to Eurovision. He's got some talent. He's got some cool ideas. Okay. That's nice. Oh. Okay. I do wish that the beat was punched in a bit more. It feels a bit like watered down, perhaps. But you could really have it punchy, like boom, boom, boom. But it doesn't really, really happen right now. Maybe in second chorus. This is a nice visual with the light. Like, you can copy and paste that immediately on your vision, and it would make a lot of sense. Yeah, they needed to make it more punchy. It's okay like this. But if you really make it bam, 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 it would have had more impact. I was gonna say, so maybe perhaps a little bit of a revamp would work. But I know I'm talking about Sweden, they will not do it. They will not give it a revamp. It's kind of the syndrome that Sweden has that they want to make it too puppy. Don't be afraid to make it a club banger. Don't be afraid of it. It will often result in a better result, basically, at Eurovision. Now they water it down to make it not as offensive and in your face. And more radio friendly, perhaps. I feel like that is a missed opportunity. It's unfortunate, really. Anyways. Let's go to the next song. The penultimate song of this video is by the artist Cornelia Jacobs. The song is called Hold Me Closer. Yes, I'm curious. Yeah, I'm curious. <laughs> it's only one way to find out what it is about. And let's click play. I guess we're getting a breakup ballad here. That's nice. I wish she didn't move on to the next verse that fast. You say that, you never felt this way that was odd. Feels like there was all of a sudden a switch in beat. Interesting. I really dig her voice. This instrumentation is very bland. It started nicely, it started like a good orchestration. Like with this, like the violin comes in as well now. 
for the rest, it's really just a normal rattling B, like. It's just a bit unfortunate, because there was so much more with this. Her voice is amazing. Yeah, this is what I mean. Like, her voice is really unique, really cool. But the beat is literally. And it doesn't do anything to enhance her beautiful voice. Meaning it becomes more of a singing competition rather than a song competition. Which your version isn't. Oh, that's such a missed opportunity. She's amazing. But the. the uh, I even think the song lyrically is really good and the way she sings the lyrics as well. Just, just the backing track is so. so basic and so unfortunate. That's a bummer. That's really, really a bummer. Like, she has so much potential. I hope to see her back with like a better song, because she just has the it factor basically. Like her voice is so cool and, and she looks amazingly, she performed it really well. Just this beat is so monotonous and so simple. It's not for me, I'm sorry. One more song to go, let's go to that. The final song that I need to react to and then I'm done with this and then I can be miserable again. Yes is by the artist Medina, and the song is called Ini Diman, which probably is Swedish. <laughs> cool. Let's find out what this final song is about. Of entire national final season, how weird. This is my last national final video that I will do, like a first reaction video. I'll do like other videos about them, but hey, it's mad, isn't it? It really is. Um, Medina, Ini Diman. Let's click play. I am very curious about this one now. Okay. Yo, this is... Oh, that's what we're doing. Wow, I would have perhaps chosen a little bit of a different drop here. Feels very like World Cup kind of, doesn't it? Like football. Oh, but I don't hate that. I really like how they sing the lyrics. Like it, it adds a melody to it, which is really good. Especially here. Like this is an epic moment. This is amazing. I hope the drop is better now. Don't think so though. Yeah. This drop is just a bit too underwhelming and too. I don't know, I feel like the BPM is also a bit too low to make it work, like you can't really do much to this. It's like this, this middling BPM where it's really difficult to go full dance mode on it. Um, like you kind of just want to do the one-two step or just like fist bump. It's definitely fun though, I'm definitely having a good time. Cool! Um, I think we need to wrap up this video. I'm gonna give you guys my top 5 of this selection. Uh, and um, let's see if we agree on those. Yes, um, see you there. And there you have it. Yes, I just reacted to the final eight songs competing in Melody Festival and including the four of the semi-final, I have come up with a top five. But before we get there, I want to give an honorable mention as first. I think Cornelia Jacobs might be the big revelation of the season. Um, she is amazing. The song though is very basic and very, I don't know, like like lyrically it's great and even the way she sings it is great. It just the beat is so monotonous and so unfortunate. So I hope she's coming back with a better song that fits her voice better, that enhances how beautiful her voice is, that enhances how good of she, an entertainer she is, because um, she really is that. Um, but yeah, the song itself, not fully on the level that I want it to be yet. Uh, but I did want to give it a little bit of an honorable mention. Then, my fifth place of this selection goes to... Liamo with Bluffin. Yes, I think it's a really good song and staging-wise it is really done well. It's very memorable, people will, will see it and be like, whoa, this is cool. I do think that they needed to punch in that beat way more than they did. They really watered it down to make it suit Melody Festival, and that's the issue with Melody Festival, man. A lot of artists and a lot of producers will make songs for Melody Festival to do well in a competition, but then 
you completely lose what you need for Eurovision. You need something unique out there and, and wow. And this is all super watered down and it's unfortunate. But fifth place for the Amo. Fourth is for Medina with Ine Diman. Yes, um, I think it's really epic how to introduce the beat. Um, like, like the pre-chorus or even the chorus really, because it's kind of chorus then drop. The drop itself is very underwhelming and I wish it was a bit different and a bit better and a bit more out there again. Um, but overall, quite a good song, very enjoyable, very World Cup feel. Uh, I think it could do well if it were to be chosen. Yes. Um, then my third place goes to Anders Bacher with the song Bigger Than The Universe. I think this is very complete. You can just put this on the Eurovision stage in Turin and it'd be good. Um, it's a good ballad. He sang it really well. Is it the most unique song out there? No. That's why it is my third and not my first. Um, but I would not be surprised if this won it overall because it, it, it's very good. It, it's exactly what people usually vote for in Sweden as well. So wouldn't be surprised if this won in the end. But I like it. That's really good, of course. Then, second place goes to Clara Hammerström with Run to the Hills. Yes, the first song that we listened to. It's really good. I really enjoy Sidetran. So, um, yeah, to have a bit of a watered down again version of it is really good. Like, I didn't expect that in Sweden. It's it's a genre that is very underappreciated, even in EDM. Like, that's not really true. It had its fair share of moments, I guess. I would love to have it in your origin. Um, staging wise, there's a lot that can happen still. It was very static. I wish it was a bit more dynamic, a lot more happened. Um, so I, I really hope that they punch it in a bit more with the staging. Um, but song wise, we're really there. Like it's a good song, it's very strong. Um, it makes a lot of sense. I like, like it a lot. But my number one does not come from this video. It is from the semi-finals. It is, of course. Kadzi or Baya with I Can't Get Enough. And honestly, it's such an addicting song. It is so unique. And maybe the only thing I would change is the staging. It feels a tad bit empty at times, even though she has dancers around her. Um, it feels like she's getting a bit like swallowed within like the big or, or how, how big the stage is, basically. Um, but it's a really fun song and uh, I can't get enough of it either. Um, that is my favorite of Melody Festival in 2022. Now it is up to you. Tell me who your top five is and what your favorite of this selection is. Also give me a prediction of what you will think will happen this Saturday. Um, make sure to subscribe to the channel and make sure to like and you know comment or said that um, on this video. Um, yeah, I made a video while I'm sick again. Yes, yay. Um, I can go out of quarantine on Saturday, so it is cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll survive until then. Um, but basically, I hope to see you in the next video. But for me today. Goodbye.